Hi, so I just received the tracks of a session that we recorded in the studio in Holland over here. And since they were recorded in Pro Tools, they are all mono files. So even for example, the overheads, left, right, they are separate mono files. But in Cubase, it's much more convenient to have them on single stereo track in one stereo file. And sometimes you have the situation in which you have the opposite thing where you get a stereo file and you want to split that stereo file into the separate mono channels. So let's have a look at how you can easily do that in Cubase. Let's go. Now let's first tackle the situation in which you get multiple mono files that you want to combine into a stereo file. Let's check this out in Cubase. Now this is a project with just the overhead recordings of the drum recording of our new song called No Silence, about to be released in April this year. And it sounds like this. So it's definitely a stereo recording and in Cubase it would be much more convenient to have this in a stereo file so that I can add stereo plugins and stereo processing on this file. Now another alternative would be to route this to a group channel and then put the stereo processing on the group channel. But it's just extra infrastructure which I don't really need. So by having a stereo file it makes editing and mixing much more easy. And previously I would use an external application for that. I think it was called Cleaver. But it's actually right here in Cubase as well so let's have a look. Because if I just select the tracks that I want to combine by control clicking and selecting them. And then I go to project, convert tracks, mono to multi-channel because I have multiple mono tracks that I want to convert to a multi-channel stereo track. I get these options. What are the source tracks? Well, the selected tracks. You can also choose all mono tracks, which in this case would work because I only have these tracks in the project. But let's just choose the selected tracks. Now in the options you can set what you want to do with these initial tracks and you can mute them, you can delete them, you can create the merge track in a new project if you want to, but I'm just going to select it. I want to keep the source tracks and I can select the destination format. And as you can see over here, it's not just possible to convert two mono tracks to a stereo track, but it's also possible to convert multiple mono tracks to much more complicated formats. But in this case, let's keep it simple. I'm going to convert them to a stereo track. Okay. Now Cubase now gives a warning saying that channel settings or automation of the selected tracks are not equal. Do you want to continue? And the reason of this is that Cubase is going to create one single stereo track now and it needs to decide on the channel settings for this stereo track. For example, how does the fader need to be set for the stereo track? Which inserts to put on the stereo track, etc. Everything that you can basically set up for a channel. And those are apparently not the same for these two channels. So let's quickly check what the difference is. If I look at overhead left, you can see that my fader is at minus 205. And if I look at overhead right, you can see that my fader is at minus 261. Now this doesn't actually influence the stereo track that is created, but Cubase just warns about the fact that the settings are not the same. What will happen is that Cubase will choose the fader as it was set in the first channel that it merges. So it will create a stereo track with the fader set to minus 205. So knowing that, let's just do that again. It gives this warning, fine. And you can see that Cubase has now created a stereo track. It has been clever. It has named it the same as the previous two tracks, but has just removed the left and right postfix in the name. And as you can see, the fader has been set to minus 205, which is the same as the fader setting for the first mono track and not the same as the fader setting for the second mono track. Let's quickly listen. Yes, and I now have a stereo overhead track that I can treat as a single track in Cubase. Now there are a couple of things to know about this process and the Cubase manual explains it quite well. It's in the chapter about merging mono audio tracks to multi-channel tracks. And the first thing is that your project contains tracks with audio events that are not in musical mode. So they're talking about these two tracks. These events should not be in musical mode. And the musical mode is indicated over here. Like this, it's in musical mode. Like this, it's not in musical mode. Now, at some point, I was caught off guard by this because I had some audio warping in the mono tracks that I wanted to merge into a stereo track. And Cubase did create the stereo track from that warped audio, except it did not include the warping. So my generated stereo track was suddenly out of sync with the initial mono tracks. So a good thing to know, and if you're in this situation, what I did, I just bounced the mono tracks that contained warping so that they were no longer in musical mode and then I could merge them into a stereo track which was still in sync. 
Now other rules that apply are tracks must fit evenly into the number of multi-channel files of the destination format. So I had two mono files, which is the right amount for creating a stereo track. The tracks must reside on the same level in the track list, at top level or within the same folder track. The tracks match in terms of channel settings and automation. If the settings differ, the settings of the topmost track of each group are used. If the separate audio events have different volume envelopes, these are calculated into the new clips. So this is the situation which I had with the fader. It took the fader setting of the first track. The level of the source event should not exceed 0 dB, otherwise clipping can occur in the created files. Now, as for the result, you see that the name of the multi-channel tracks, in my case, my stereo track, will be derived from the mono track source. And there are a couple of naming rules, which basically say that the track will be named the same as the mono tracks with LNR removed if they're in the name. And the last part is also interesting because this states that your merge tracks will be in a separate folder. If we look at the pool quickly, you can see that there's now a merge folder, which contains the stereo track and the two mono tracks are one level up. Now, before I go on and show you the conversion from stereo to mono, which can also be very useful in some cases. If you like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm will spread this to more people. Subscribe to the channel and you can ring the little bell icon if you want to be notified when I post another video. Other options to support the channel is by using the super thanks button below the video or buying anything through the affiliate links in the description if you want to buy anything at these stores. But let's get back to converting a stereo track to separate mono tracks. Now the ability to convert a stereo file to multiple mono files can also be very handy sometimes. For example, I regularly record an acoustic guitar with two separate microphones and I then record it to a stereo track so that it's easy to comp the part. But after I've comped it, I'd like to have the tracks as separate mono tracks so that I can process the different microphones in a different way. And I also regularly use it when I record my electric guitar via my Kemper. Then I have the amped signal on the left side and a DI track on the right side. And I use that file during comping. And then I split it later so that I have a separate DI track, which I can use for reamping if necessary. Or even if you need to have files for a door that doesn't support stereo tracks, for example, it's easy to be able to convert a stereo track to two mono tracks. So let's check how to do that in Cubase. So in this case, I have a stereo acoustic guitar recording where the left and the right side were recorded with two different microphones. So clearly a stereo track. So I again can go to project, convert tracks, multi-channel to mono. I get a very similar dialog in which I need to indicate which tracks I want to convert. Only the selected track, what I want to do to the source track, I want to keep it, and which naming convention I want for the mono audio files that are created. And the first one seems suitable to me. Just add an L and an R at the end of the file name. So let's do this. And as you can see, I now have two mono tracks, one for the left side and one for the right side. If you look at the panning, the channel for the left file is also fully panned to the left. The channel for the right file is fully panned to the right. And if I play this, I basically have the same result as with the stereo file. But I now do have the ability to process the left and the right side differently with EQ, for example, because they were recorded with different microphones. Now, again, there are a couple of rules that Cubase uses for this conversion. And these are in the manual in the chapter about splitting multi-channel audio tracks. The resulting number of mono tracks corresponds to the channel configuration of the source tracks. So I started with a stereo track and two mono tracks were generated from that. All channel settings of the source track are copied to the tracks created by the split operation. So if I had set my fader on the stereo track in a certain way, the both mono tracks would also have the same fader setting. The multi-channel audio material of the source track is split into mono events, which are inserted on the new tracks. Well, obviously that's what I want. Again, the generated audio is not in the main audio folder of the project, but it's in a subfolder called split. If we look at that in the pool, you can see the left and right acoustic guitar files are in the split folder. And my main acoustic guitar file, the stereo file, is in the main audio folder. Now Steinberg has a couple of notes about this conversion. If you split a stereo track, the resulting mono tracks are panned hard left and right using the standard stereo panner. That's what I just showed you already. The next note says that the routing will basically be copied from the original stereo track as well. And the next note is about a bit of a special circumstance is that when you have an event on your original track, which is not according to the channel configuration of the original track. For example, I have a mono event on the stereo track then that mono event will appear in both derived mono tracks as well. 
And that's basically it when converting multi-channel audio to mono tracks and vice versa. Now it's also very important to know when you're recording mono or stereo audio is how Cubase handles the files that are created. And I have a separate video about that that you can check out over here. Have a look, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.